Rupees are the form of money in the world of Zelda, and believe it or not, you don't need insane amounts of money to get everything you want in this game. The biggest upgrades are going to start by going to Lake Hylia and talking to the Great Fairy, which is going to upgrade your style, which increases the amount of accessories you get to wear at once in the game. And the rupees required for each upgrade are 100 to get to 2, 300 to get to 3, 500 to get to 4, and 1000 to get to 5. This will bring your total cost to 1900 rupees. Speaking about accessories, there are actually only 4 shops in the game that sell 4 accessories. And that's going to be the Zora Flippers, which are going to cost 350 rupees in the Jabul area. The Gerudo Sandals, which are going to cost 400 rupees, and believe it or not, it's in Gerudo Town. The Stone Anklet, which is going to cost you 400 rupees, located right in Castletown in Hylia. And the Climbing Band, which is going to cost you 500 rupees that you can find in Kakariko Village. This will bring you to a total of 1,650 rupees. The only other expense you'll run into the game if you want to complete the entire smoothie and potion recipe list is going to cost you 10 rupees to crap one, which is going to bring you to a total of 700 rupees since there are a total of 70 recipes. So with fairy upgrades, accessories, and recipe making, that brings you to a grand total of 4,250 rupees, which is not including any extra potions or stuff you want to buy on the side. But this is all you need in order to max upgrade in the game. Now that you establish the main reasons you need to make money let's talk about how to make that money the first money farming method is probably the most simple and basic and i call this the basic gameplay farming this is where you just go throughout the world you cut grass rupees drop on the floor you explore caves you open up chests and you naturally just acquire rupees over time this is probably the most organic method anyway that's the boring one right you didn't click the video for that let's talk about passive farming this crow echo is actually a very unique echo because it's it allows you to farm enemies for rupees. When a crow makes contact with an enemy, it hits them, dropping rupees on the ground. Now, while it isn't a lot, this is actually a much more passive attempt because the higher level try goes, the more crows you can have it at once, and you can just keep walking through enemies while they hit the enemies, pick up their coins, and keep moving on to the next target as you can't keep spamming the same enemy over and over and over again. Also, it's a great thing to do when your money runs low and you feel like you just need to get a little bit of a boost on rupees. The next method is going to be amiibo date skip farming and selling to the shop. If you are one of the people that are blessed to have three Zelda amiibos, well then you're in luck. All you have to do is spam this over and over again if you are one of those players who don't mind opening up your settings and going forward by one day on your Nintendo Switch. This is the date skip method and it works really well to get those materials and you can sell them to shops right away to get that quick quick cash. Or you can stock up on these materials for smoothies, which I'll be talking about after this next one, which is going to be material farming by actually talking to the smoothie guy. In fact, the smoothie guy, or known as the business scrub, is going to give you a quest known as recipes, please, where you have to combine two various ingredients together in order to get a survey scope. Now, what the survey scope is going to do is enhance the amount of materials you find throughout your world on your adventure. So if you hit a monster, it'll have a higher chance of dropping materials. If you cut some grass underwater it might drop that bubble kelp if you throw some boxes you might even find some nice ingredients in it pretty much that is what they survey scope does which is missing from a lot of people who tell you how to farm stuff so you get your survey scope after making 10 recipes now the survey scope can be upgraded even further to give much more powerful effects that's when the quest is going to update again it's still recipes please where you're this time going to have to create the 20 recipes with your ingredients by doing this and non-stop just going through your combos of your smoothie ingredients you'll be able to eventually upgrade to the survey binoculars so get this straight 30 total recipes to get the maximum powerful accessory that allows you to drop ingredients from breaking objects or defeating monsters. And because you need 30 specific recipes, think of it like this, this entire process over here is going to cost you about 300 rupees since it costs 10 per recipe. Also, I just wanted to point out this is not accounted for in the total that I said at the beginning of the video because this is something extra if you want to do this as a side quest. After a bunch of testing, I have come up with a another farming method known as monster camp farming if you didn't know specifically monster parts like monster fang and monster gut are worth 20 rupees per which is more than any other ingredient in the game so i have figured
figured out that if you go to an enemy camp and fight some of the enemies, do not fight all of them, and then enter a cave and come back out, you can rinse and repeat that fight again, right? Pretty freaking cool. That is a great way if you want to get things like Monster Fang and Monster Guts. If you want examples of some spots that while you're looking at the gameplay, you can find a Borblin camp by heading to this war point over here in Gruno Desert, moving towards the right, and then right from this cave over here, you're going to be fighting your enemies, take out three of them, walk back in the cave, walk back out, defeat three more, pick up some monster parts that drop. You can farm that over again. Remember, if you do knock out the whole camp and the chest unlocks, then you gotta wait. And going in and out of a cave is not gonna help you get this at all because it's done for now. I don't know the time period exactly, but it just sucks that you can't farm anymore. Another camp that I used actually to start farming is going to be the Lizalfos camp located all the way in the top left area of your map at this war point over here. Now, what's cool about this is if you accidentally nuke all the Lizalfos here, you can still go in this cave and come back out of here, break the boxes, and you'll get some regular materials for farming like grapes, electro apples, and honey. I try this on repeat even though I took out the camp and boxes do respawn from coming in and out of caves. But I would love everyone to let me know down in the comments below if you try this cave method anywhere, what's the best cave spots you find in order to farm when it comes to certain areas? Please test it out for the community by selling each monster. So in summary of this section, one monster fang equals 20 rupees. So the more monster fangs you collect, the more rupees, and it's a more combat method as opposed to what we're going to be talking about next, which is a little bit more of a tedious method, but it'll get the job done. And that's going to be mixed tough smoothie farming. Let me explain this for you. One of the easiest ingredients to actually get in the game is going to be located in the oasis area in the desert inside of this tent right over here, known as the tough mango plant lab. And when you talk to this lady inside of here, there is going to be a mini game called Mango Rush, where you're going to have to knock a bunch of mangoes off with your character. Now, there's a basic version of the game that you're going to have to do. And if you knock off all the mangoes, the reward you're given at the end is always going to be five mangoes. However, there is a game mode after that called the Vibrant Mode. And if you do all of that, it's going to give you eight. The only reason I'm not focusing on the Vibrant one is because there are thorns that show up in the area and maybe that might cause someone to mess up. The basic one's the most simple, no obstacles, just spin and you're done. You get your five. So keep in mind that when you do this to get five mangoes, you're losing Using 10 rupees per round if you do it successfully. And the cool part is if you take a mango and combine it with bubble kelp, electro apple, chili cactus, or radiant butter, you'll get a smoothie known as Mix Tough Smoothie, which sells for 50 rupees a piece. That's pretty nice, right? But what you need to keep in mind is even though this may be the best smoothie in the game, it's going to cost you another 10 rupees to even craft that. So for any nerds out there who want to just know the math formula and if it's really efficient or not, you could determine the the efficiency of this by looking at this formula. One run of mango rush is equal to five mangoes with the cost listed here, plus five tough mango smoothies after you get your mangoes and do the whole mixing, which is a negative 50 cost is going to equal 190 rupees in total profit. And as stated in the beginning, if you want to do all the main activities I mentioned, that's going to cost you 4,250 rupees. And if you divide that by the 190 rupees per run, that's going to give you a number of 22.3 runs. Of course, you can't do 22.3 in this game so we round up to 23 runs that means 23 runs times 190 rupees gives you a net profit of 4370 rupees which means 23 basic runs gives you 115 total mangoes that's a simple part 23 runs 115 total mangoes and that will take you 23 minutes okay if you want to skip all the bs above <laughs> just keep 23 runs 115 mangoes now to go along with your 115 mangoes you're going to need to get 115 of another material. This method is known as material cave farming, which means we go in and out of caves in order to respawn stuff. And one of the big spots we're going to go is to the right of the Zora village in this location at this cave area. So we're going to go there. We're going to break some grass on the floor, which is going to then drop ourselves some bubble kelp, pick up that bubble kelp after clearing up that area, go back in the cave, reset, come back out. And wow, look at that. All the seaweed grass has shown up again and you just have to do it again. You'll get bubble kelp and come back in. And as you keep repeating it, you'll stock up on 
a bunch of kelp. You can see this five minute footage sped up, which shows me just going from 30 something all the way up to 80. It happens within five minutes. So I'm pretty sure you could get to 115 to match the mangoes in that short amount of time. I also want to point out that sometimes the grass is going to drop rupees. So you'll be able to get rupees while you're also doing this. And another thing I wanted to point out is that the jellyfish here also drop kelp. So if someone maybe figures out a better spot than this in the water, please let me know in the comments below. Maybe there's a jellyfish optimized efficiency run or you kill the crabs and get it. There's just a better method. But for now, this is the spot. Hopefully this helps you guys. But speaking of the rupees dropping over here, there is actually an accessory that is going to help with dropping more rupees when you break objects or take out enemies. And that accessory is going to be the silver brooch, which I have discussed in my accessory video. So if you watch that, you should be good on the accessory part here. But but speaking of accessories, we're going to talk about the first one where you can find in a cave all the way up here at the top left of Jabul area. But in order to break that entrance to get inside to get that reward, you're going to need a bomb echo. And the best one to get is the zero located in the top left area over here in Elden Volcano. You get that zero, you go back, you blow up the wall and you'll get yourself the silver brooch. Now, there's even a better item than the silver brooch known as the gold brooch, but something really cool is that you can combine the gold brooch with the silver brooch in your accessory inventory to get more rupees to drop. But how exactly do you get the gold brooch? Well, it's going to be unlocked by doing a secret quest called the Secret Chief Talk Quest, which is going to take place by the east of Zora Cove by seeing this NPC, Ragma, just over here like this. If you do not see this NPC over here, it means a few things. You may have not completed the Jabul water area, rifts and caves. You maybe didn't complete the Gerudo desert area as well as the midpoint section of the game and then come back here in order to get this. But once you initiate and talk to Rogma over here, east of Zora Cave, after this, you're then going to head all the way up to where Drad's house is at the top of this place, where you're going to talk to his assistant. The assistant then tells you to find someone named Tellum, who's going to be all the way to the right over here in this location after you're done with this all you have to do is then head over to the cave where we just talked about bubble kelp farming enter into the cave where the bubble kelp farming is where a wholesome cutscene will play out but we're not going to talk about anything in regards to the story and then you get yourself a gold brooch now you can get yourself even more rupees when you are farming things and defeating monsters and breaking objects now the most broken method of farming which requires you to get the gold finch that does this now, what's really cool about the gold finch is that each enemy it hits can drop almost up to 50 rupees when it takes an attack on them. You combine this with your silver brooch and your gold brooch and you're talking about money scattering all the time. But this gold finch is not as simple to get, but also at the same time worth getting because you don't have to do anything boring. And it's a fun way of farming. To do this, you have to reach the midpoint of the game after the events of Hyrule Castle and then go north from the Hyrule Ranch. You will have an interaction with Dompe, which will start Dompe's quest line after you kill that crow that's been bothering him. It's kind of funny that Dompe's quest line starts with a crow. As you go further in, you're going to be creating all these various creations for Dompe, which I do have covered in my automaton video. So if you want to see all the details of which specific ones you have to get, I'm going to throw that one at the end of the video. So you can just click on that one. Once you do all that and you go through bringing him all the parts he needs to create various robotic creatures that are really broken and OP, the final one is going to be a gold gold finch which is going to just require you to have a gold fan which you should be very familiar with from doing your bunches of mango rushes because that was one of the rewards for completing the vibrant version and then you just have a crow that we've also talked about in the video which is the first you know easiest money farming method combine those two together and it gives you the gold finch that you can wreak havoc with on everything in the game and now you're a pro at various money farming methods in the game so you should check out this video on your screen and proceed further because i know you want to click on it. Come on, do it. And if you don't want to do that, hit that subscribe button right there.